right, uh, this is Fred Shell. Uh, I build boats. Shell Boats is the company name. So earlier this week, uh, I was chatting over breakfast with my favorite sailing partner. And uh, we were thinking about the idea of a lighter weight boat that would be uh, easy to paddle, like canoe style, uh, or row, or p perhaps even paddle with a double paddle, kayak paddle, for swamping. Swamping in the sense of uh, using it in swamps, not filling it with water. So uh, uh, I started fiddling around uh, uh, with this, starting from the basis of my leaf series of boats. Well, there's quite a bit of rocker in it. And uh, behind here in the shop, I just happened to have a Swifty 12, which is the other major hull shape that I use mm -hmm. and pattern set. Uh, Swifty 12 has a lot less rocker on, it's basically a planing hull. And uh, what I <laughs> what I did, I didn't think it would work at all, uh, was I used the building jig for Swifty 12 uh, with a little more curvature in it for the bottom, uh, but not nearly as much as the leaf series. And I cut out a leaf bottom, uh, stretched to a 12 foot design. What I wanted was a narrower beam for paddling and um, a lower a lower uh, boat overall to make it a little uh, more appropriate for for swamping. I did a test fit. I had this all together uh, with the decks on and the seats in and uh, and all that stuff uh, as a dry fit. And I liked the way it looked. So yesterday I took it apart and uh, put it back together with glue. So far, the seat supports. I put the bottom down, then the seat supports on that, and then planked it. I did decide that uh, I wanted to have a, some kind of a basic um, sailing ability. So this is a, a mass thwart. All right, now I've uh, done the filleting on the inside of the plank lap seams. And after the filleting setup, um, I coated the areas inside where the seat, seat areas are covered with epoxy coating. And then uh, put the uh, lids on, 3 8 ply. It's creating two pretty large flotation chambers and uh, could be pretty good, pretty comfortable seating. Here it is a few days later, two coats of epoxy and everything. It looks a little bit like varnish. It could be finished just like this and varnished. Uh, I'm taking it to, for a test sail here on the trailer. I put it on top of the car just to see if it would fit. Yeah, it's, it's good, 95 pounds, not a difficult car top. So this is a mid-November day in Lake Champlain. Uh, not exactly swamping. But uh, I want to try it out with the sail rig. Um, there's just a little breeze going here. It sailed quite nicely. Please, even the, the very shallow draft keels on it are enough to give it uh, a good grip and uh, minimize the slippage. Using an oar as a rudder, that's a really old idea. It predates the dedicated rudder by about 2,000 years. But it's a, it's a way of simplifying things because we're going to carry two oars on the boat. And uh, why well, have a separate rudder? It's uh, kind of neat to use, too. I've never tried it before, but I, I like it a lot. Yeah, we'll get the rig off and see what the, about the rowing characteristics here. You can see that's a pretty light rig. And here we go. Uh, this boat has, it's, it's only 95 pounds, but it has quite good stability. And it's at the middle point where the oar locks are. Uh, we have enough uh, 
width to use six foot oars and uh, be very comfortable rowing. And uh, very maneuverable. They don't have to be heavy oars. They shouldn't be heavy oars because the whole concept here is a, a lightweight boat um, and uh, multi-purpose. So we're going to be carrying a pair of oars and a rig. Sail rig, the total sail rig, uh, mast, boom, and sail uh, breaks down into a small package, but it also only weighs nine pounds altogether. Is that about a 33 or 4 square foot sail? Yeah, rowing on that looks like a pleasure to me. Let's see what else this boat can do. Well, you get into swamps and marshes in those areas. You'd really like to be facing forward. See where you're going. Be able to dodge the tree stumps or whatever. Double blade, paddled, double blade paddle like this, kayak style, uh, works quite nicely. Of course, the other is a canoe paddle. Uh, using that oar, just slightly tied off as a rudder, can keep you on a true course without swapping side to side with if you're single paddling it. Actually works pretty nicely. You can do it. You can keep it on a course if you give the oar a little, you know, the paddle a little twist at the end of the stroke. But uh, yeah, it's kind of a relaxed thing with that uh, steering oar. Of course, if you've got somebody to help you with the rowing, the, the paddling, that is, uh, it can be very relaxing. And, uh, again, that forward view is just uh, that's pretty cool. Trying to look at birds or sunset or whatever. Uh, rowing is okay for getting somewhere faster. But I don't know. Paddling is relaxing and uh, uh, very pleasant, especially when you get into those tight little spots where you see more stuff going on at the same time. You know, birds and whatever. And of course, just being on the water is half the pleasure. And I think this boat will get you on the water more. Many possible ways of finishing, of course, and the varnish and uh, paint on this one. Uh, and uh, I wanted to show you the bottom. These are the keels, the shallow draft keels with the aluminum strips on them that allow you to drag it up on a concrete ramp if you need to, or bump over logs. I did put two coats of tinted epoxy on that bottom, below the water line. Uh, now that it's painted, you'd like to get it back in the water again. Here's how you can launch it from the trailer. Like I, like I said before, you can trail car top it if you don't have a trailer. But the trailer's pretty handy to have if you got room for it. And you can see at uh, uh, bottom, you know, the bottom, those keels can take the ramp just fine. Uh, no problem there. Um, yeah, so I wanted to see uh, uh, in this little section here, was, there's not much wind, but kind of wanted to demonstrate the, uh, the capability of switching from mass to row to oar and that sort of thing. Um, uh, there's two approaches to carrying a sail rig. One is you can take the the mast apart, which is in two sections, uh, so you don't have anything longer than, I believe, six and a half feet, roughly, uh, and uh, including the boom. And uh, you can stow those in the boat without too much, you know, impact on the space of the boat. The other approach, though, is to roll it up tight, like it is here. The mast is very light; it's only seven pounds, and. Uh, and it gets down to like an inch and a quarter at the top. So it's not, even if the sail's rolled up tight, it's not much wind resistance up there when the sail is stowed like that. And stowed up there, of course, it has no impact on usable space in the boat. And it's handy to set up or take down, you know, 
off the boat and start sailing whenever there's an opportunity and, and uh, you know, on, uh, roll it back up again if the wind stops. Well, that's the main thing I'm going to demonstrate here today is just doing that. Hope to get a little wind, but um, well, it didn't happen. Anyhow, and this was a, basically the last sail. I think we're early December here now. Mm. Yeah, and uh, uh, there are certain members of the family are telling me that I probably shouldn't be out there in the Champlain anymore until spring. And we're gonna just kind of roll around out there a little bit and then um, we'll stop and try and put the mast this put the rig up see how long that takes um, the boom is stowed under the gunnel uh, and uh, with a couple a bungee cord so it's really easy it's out of the way totally and, uh, easy to get at and easy to hook up here So here he's got the boom hooked it onto the hooks onto the mast right like that. There's a little cup at the front of it, and uh, slip the stopper nut around the end of the boom, and uh, we're ready to sail. And I got uh, 40 seconds according to my timer here. Not too shabby. And there goes the steering oar down, and all set. Let's see. There's only one thing missing. Yeah, well, you saw it sail earlier, and it does sail really nicely. <laughs> uh, but the the point that uh, the rig can be carried like that, and you know, so it's, so it's an all-purpose rig that uh, is practical to switch back and forth with, uh, which would be especially important if you are going uh, if you're on rivers or you know uh, those kind of, kind of areas where. Uh, you really can't sail all the time, but you'd like to be able to when the wind is favorable. Uh, and the shallow, I mentioned the shallow draft keels before, and uh, they do a, a, a good enough job that you can, you can sail to windward quite well with it. Uh, so, uh, see now we're, we decided to give it up and, and uh, roll the rig back up, and I think it takes about the same amount of time to get it stowed. As, did to unroll it, maybe another 10 seconds when you're rolling when you're rolling the sail up. That's the story. For more details on ordering kits or plans for this boat, you can uh, email to us here. Uh, uh, the website has general information. Uh, this uh, details on this boat may or may not be on there yet. So I'm just waiting for next spring. On the other hand, I may have to take a trip to Florida with this little devil. I'm not sure I can wait. Okay, uh, happy exploring. And I hope we can help you make your trip.